Gregory. Hi, Gregory. Thank you for joining us. Uh, it's very nice to see you. Yes, Anuka. Um, it's been a long time. I only saw you in person yesterday. Uh, <laughs> but here we you're joking say that you're joking <laughs> because <laughs> i was i was talking about it like uh, what five minutes that we yeah, know each yeah. other since like two years already yeah. <laughs> so i'm flattered to be on this uh, show today thank you for having me um i hope to be able to answer um any questions you might have um generally none of this is legal advice please consult an attorney um, if you have specific questions but yes as nanuka um as stated, we've known each other for a long time now. Um, she's incredibly knowledgeable and has educated me um, on Georgian politics and uh, the country of Georgia in general. Um, without this, I um, could not represent the clients that I do. Um, so yeah, but we, you're, you're slowly you're becoming uh, an expert in Georgian politics. So, so you know you, most of it. You know most of it. Well, yeah, I know the the main political parties, um, some of the the names of the main players. I may not be able to pronounce the names correctly, but I can. I, that's uh, okay. We're used to that. Some people. But you so can I'm pronounce a, my my surname. That's that's yeah. something already. <laughs> So yeah, so I'm an immigration attorney, specifically um, deportation defense. Uh, the firm I work for um, does business litigation as well, primarily. Uh, and um, I've been practicing in New York for quite a while. Um, I've had cases all over the country. Um, you know, since COVID, a lot of it's been virtual, so I can appear wherever, you know, wherever need be. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions, discuss uh, Georgian politics. So, and, uh, <laughs> can we discuss U.S. Anyway. politics too? <laughs> so, well, the more so. I learn, the better I am, at, you know, at um, my job. So, okay, so <laughs> let's start with 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 the major major issue for uh, let's say for the American voters, okay, okay, for this year. So last. How many? Three, four years has been really difficult and extreme in terms of uh, immigration. And as you know, and as we know all, uh, there are many Georgian uh, citizens who crossed the um, southern border and came you know, into the United States through the Mexican border. Some of them were paroled in at the beginning. I think it was like 20. 20 late 2020 2021 um, after uh, covid i would say so and then 2022 23 24 as i know there are over 150,000 um immigrants uh, particularly from uh, georgia georgian citizens there are more like from um this, ex-Soviet Union, um, Eastern Europe, but uh, we are, we're going to focus on, on uh, Georgian immigrants. So uh, is there anything specific that you could say they need to expect from like within next months? If something's uh, going to change in, in U.S. politics, if, if the government's going to change, if the, we're going to elect, like you're going to elect a new president, um, the policies that he's announcing, um, and 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 the the plans he has for the immigrants, is it going to affect Georgians too, or like only the criminals, only the bad guys? Let's say you see, I have the, the guys yeah, guys yeah. t-shirt on, so yes, but that's the different a matter. You would admire the new good shirt. <laughs> So yeah, okay. So yes. So if there is a change, in, you know, if the Republicans are elected, um, there will be some changes. But there's a couple important things to note. If you're in, once you're in the United States, the only way you can be deported is if a judge orders you removed. Um, we don't really use the term, de you know, deported anymore. It's called removal, but everybody knows. You know, sure. Sure, it's the same thing. So you basically so, are kicked out of the country. So. Yes, yes. So um, you can, if you, what will happen is you get a notice to appear in court 
and then you have to appear and then there's a whole legal process and it, it ends with a trial where a judge will decide whether you're removed or you can stay. Um, when you cross, the, if somebody crosses the border, crosses the border, and I'm not encouraging anybody to do so or break any. Sure. Yes. And uh, you can be, it's called expedited removal. And that's the only way you can be deported without a court order, without a judge ordering you deported. And how, how can I, so the, just to be specific, so who can place you into the expedite removal and why? So just, just to explain it, yeah. so I, they know, but I want them to yeah. hear it from your That's fine. mouth, yeah. <laughs> like from the yes. professional. Yeah, so please. If, if one enters the United States without a visa, without any status, without, you know, any claim to legal status, uh, you can request what's called a credible fear interview. And an asylum officer will interview you and decide whether you have credible fear. And if you have credible fear, then they will place you into removal proceedings. If you don't have credible fear of returning to your own country, they can, they can issue an order of expedited removal. And that is without a judge. That's just, you know, ICE and the asylum officer decide. And ICE, which is like, Department of Homeland Security, right? Correct. DHS, yes. which is a different institution as the immigration right. court, right? Yes, In, Im immigration court is the Department of Justice. Yeah. Um, Homeland Security is, you know, Department of Homeland Security. Under it has ICE, Customs Border Protection, and the, the ERO, which is the Enforcement of Removal Operations. Um, they're, and it's regulated by Senate, I think, right? like or overseen by Senate. It's not really by, yeah, by Congress, by, Senate, by, yeah, by, con by, con by, by House, by the House. They're in a yeah, separate agency. And then if you're outside of the country, you deal with the Department of State through the National Visa Center. Uh, that's if you're outside. Of okay, so, so we, uh, uh, the one can't deport you or remove you if you're already in uh justice department's uh jurisdiction correct if without judge's order yeah correct if, you, if you're in immigration court mm -hmm. with the department of state you're there until the judge says you know uh, grants or denies your application okay so if these people have already started their um applications uh to withhold the removal what that we call 589 application, like asylum application, oh, yes. and their case is already in the court, and sure. it's processed by the EO, um, EOIR, which is like immigration court. Yeah. So exactly. they can't be, yeah, yeah exactly, office, exactly. So, so it doesn't matter who's in the presidential office, so they can't be, is there any chance that this massive deportation which we hear very often and which scares me sometimes although i everyone knows my um political sympathies where they lie <laughs> like where exactly they lie but but uh, uh, it scares me really if it scares me then it's gonna scare like one hundred and fifty thousand georgians who don't work with attorneys and who don't exactly know what's going to happen. So let's let's clarify for, for for them. So that doesn't matter. So that these people who have applied for the political asylum and have already like started their legalization process or to prove well, that they, they they have the claim for yeah, yeah. they have the claim um, you know, for the asylum in the United States. So they can't be removed, right? Like, like legally, uh, according no, I mean, to even, even if you, you know, commit a terrible crime, you're still in immigration court, and you can't be picked. You can't be picked up and put on a plane immediately. If you're in immigration court, the judge will have to decide. Um, what the when they discuss, you know, mass deportation. Mm -hmm. What what happens at an, you know after an immigration trial? they don't you know there's not a bailiff or ice doesn't just grab you and put you on an airplane from the court and they yeah. they they, they yeah. just don't pick you up and yeah. place you somewhere right you're usually 30, you're given 30 days to appeal 
and okay. there's a stay there's usually a stay of removal and so nobody's really you know picking you up or looking for these people unless you do have a you know a criminal record so when they talk about mass deportation it's likely that they're talking to people about people who have already been ordered removed but ice hasn't in the know, united states or their criminals in their countries or the other countries so who who does the, this people the republicans let's say yeah. mean like who exactly is going to be affected or deported or removed the people who committed crimes in the united states or uh, who just have like a criminal record in their country so that depends i can't speak for the republicans no no uh, no the, uh, illegally how uh, who's who's under this this statement like who uh, who's considered uh, like the first yeah, so first would, group that they would be so I, I can't answer whether they would prioritize people who committed crimes in their own countries versus in the United States um but it would they would when you're arrested in the United States it depends what where you are but you know you, you hear the term sanctuary city a lot yeah which is That's, like New York LA Chicago yeah. right so what that generally means is that the local police will not report you to Homeland Security if they're, you know, arrest you. In other cities, in other states, uh, they, the local police will notify ICE that, hey, we have an arrest. This person doesn't appear to have any legal status. And then after the, you know, the criminal um, cases, you know, is, uh, ended, they'll then send them to ICE. Like we've had a case. Yes, we have. Yeah, just recently. Unfortunately. In yeah. in in Mississippi, the person yes. was by mistake picked up by the police, placed into the custody, and then, despite he that the all charges were or or char, uh, all charges been dropped, he was picked up by ICE and he's now in in. Uh, deportation oh i not in deportation but in detention center yes so that can't be happening in in new york right because well, it is it has, you know if you commit a very serious crime they'll you know they will um you know refer you to ice um if you're given a you know there's, there's different crimes if if you're given a prison sentence and you're mm -hmm. in prison the second you leave prison, they put you in. Oh, even even if you're a permanent resident, and even yeah. if you have, if you has haven't been, uh, I don't know, like illegal for for a second yeah. year, so yeah. you can they can they can pick you up. That's a different thing, <laughs> and I wouldn't concern myself. With, well, everyone uh, deserves uh, defense, etc. Human rights, all all of it. I agree with that, but. They are not my first concern. So my concern are the people who are, uh, as you know, and as you've seen the cases, like uh, political asylums, like claimants for the political asylum, people who are uh, hardworking, honest, good citizens, who were good citizens in Georgia and came for, uh, based on, came to the United States based on like well-based fear in the past, past prosecution or future fear and have the claim, have started the uh, asylum application and process to, to prove their case. Are they in the danger or not? So that's that's what I need to tell them oh. <laughs> and, and to know. Well, well, hypothetically, but you, you never know. So, so, so anything could happen. Yeah, so when you enter the country, you're, you're it, it, let's say you pass the credible fear interview that we discussed, right? Mm -hmm. They will parole you in, even though, you know, there, there's different types of parole. Like, we yeah, the sure. I mm -hmm. you know, they'll give you the I-94, but a lot of times they don't give you the I-94. They mm -hmm. simply parole you in as opposed to detaining you for the entire length of your court proceedings. So when you're paroled in, there's certain... Um, requirements you have to report to your deportation officer at the ero for a check-in usually once a year once every six months you can't commit any crimes you can't leave the state um without permission sometimes you know it depends on the parole request 
So if you violate any of this parole, um, they can detain you again. Um, and this is largely discretionary. So it's up to the deportation officer. But can they remove you? They can deport. Uh, they can detain you and place you into the detention yeah. uh, facility. But yeah. can they re deport you without judge's order if your no. case is already in the immigration court? No. They, so they it's by the law, that's impossible, right? Correct. Unless you're at the board, like we discussed, with expedited removal. But once you're in yeah, the sure. Sure, and unless there's something, for example, remember um, past weeks we had uh, cases when uh, the sponsor was, uh, I don't know, not credible or has sponsored like many people and there was some, some suspicion that this might be a uh, fraud or fraudulent uh, relations and, and they, they've placed in, in um, a detention people who actually had already their EADs and they they were like far uh, almost done with their their um, immigration uh, case like they were waiting for individual hearing and they were placed in, in removal some of them got removed if if they proved that you committed something or, or you lied you committed fraud they can remove you and get the judge's order or how how no, no. Can they, no, no, just, no, they won't. They, is they, it is that discretional? Well, well, it's discretionary to place you back in detention, right? If you violate the terms of your parole, mm -hmm. they can place you back in detention. Usually, it's in a different state, and you'll the, the court will switch venues. So, if they put why you is in, it in different state? Because they can't because deport New you York from the New York. York. <laughs> Oh, that's There's the reason. I didn't know that's the reason. You know, so they're placing them in, in New Jersey or somewhere yeah. close or Pennsylvania or somewhere. New York's too crowded to house, you know, um, in you know populations of, uh, you know, for ICE. So it's usually they're sent to other states for violating the terms of their parole. Uh, and, and we switch venues and continue the case from there. Uh, there's... However, there are many difficulties with representing detained clients. Um, and it's not the same type of case. It is, you know, all these cases are very serious. But if your client is detained, you have to do your best to communicate. Um, you need to get all the evidence. It, it adds a, a significant layer of difficulty in uh, representation. And especially if it's in a state where the judges are Let's less say safe. not yeah yeah and let's say less friendly towards the immigrants yeah. and towards the people who are crossing illegally the, the southern border. So um, one more question about uh, the immigration, um, like the, this detail. So um, if if let's say the person's in the United States, like person has crossed the uh, southern border. He was released. He has started his uh, case. Uh, he got his EAD, but his, his, his trial is, uh, let's say, in 2030 or 29. And he's, he was not paroled, but he has met a U.S. citizen and got married. Can this person um, ever become like a permanent resident based on the marriage or... Uh, citizen of the United States? Yeah, so this is a great question. This happens very frequently because of the immigration court backlog. People come here and they end up living their lives. They're mm. working, they're living. They, they meet someone. <laughs> they meet, <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not normal, it, right? It's, no, it's completely normal. Um, and then, you know, they have their immigration trial. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, so... If you enter the United States legally and you're married to a U.S. citizen, your unlawful presence, which is being present in the United States without lawful status, is waived if you're married to a U.S. citizen. Hmm. You, but what is not waived is your illegal entry. So if you cross the border without status, hmm. without, you know, any, any visa, you enter the country illegally. Called EWI, entry without inspection. Inspection, yeah. 
there is a waiver for this. And it's based off of hardship to your U.S. citizen spouse or parents, not your children. Oh, okay. Can't be your children um, because that would, and the, and the political reason for that is people talk about anchor babies. I'll come to the United States and have a kid and, you know, they'll, I'll, I'll be able to stay here, you know, and, and become. Well, I know, I know at least 10 people. Yeah. Who yeah. became parents so in it's not it's not after <laughs> after crossing after it's, crossing the border yeah. no no i i know yeah. people who uh had babies here already but it's That's yeah but it's, it's not true you can't do if you enter the country legally and you have a u.s citizen child that is over 21 they can sponsor you but uh, having if you enter the country illegally baby can't sponsor you no no i understand no. So you would, what you would need is called a 601A waiver. And you, you would have to demonstrate significant hardship to your spouse or parents, U.S. citizen spouse or parents, if you are removed from the country. And excuse me, that's incorrect. It, if you leave the country, you are barred from re-entering for a certain number right. of years. Right. So what this does is it, cancels out the bar it allows you to re-enter the country country legally and obtain a green card permanent residency so in any case you need to leave the country like and yeah. come back so i i heard something uh has changed in that law so so well they yes so so there's there's some other options one is called parole in pit place otherwise known as pip and that's if you have relatives in the U.S. military. Oh, where you oh. Call, it's called parole in place, where you don't they basically they pretend you left and re-entered legally. But you have to have a relative in, in U.S. military. military? Yeah. Okay, uh, none of I I don't yeah. know any Georgians yeah. who have. Well, I know a couple, but not not many who have relatives in U.S. military. Um, so so this person who's married to a US citizen and has illegal entry does have some chance to become a permanent resident if the entry issue is resolved right if yes but but it depends if if there's have, a waiver if they leave the country and come back yes and you have to yes so but it's it's not automatic you have oh, sure, to sure. demonstrate nothing is automatic yeah, yeah. You, well some things are you know if you if your U.S. citizen child is over 21 and sponsors you, if you know any you enter the country legally, you're good. Uh, but with this, you have to demonstrate significant hardship to your wife or parents. So cases I've had is your you know your parents have dementia, or your okay. your wife is seriously ill, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and can't live without you for the five or ten years that you're barred from re-entering. I see that it would create a significant amount of stress with you know um, to the, to that U.S. citizen hardship to that. US. Well, okay, there's a parents and there's a, a spouse. Yeah. Right. Does the same apply to both? Like, do yeah. you have to do you have to prove hardship uh, in in case of the spouse? Is yeah. it? Like natural that spouse can't uh, wait yeah, like five or ten years. Okay. You still have to prove it. Okay. <laughs> awesome. So uh, <laughs> this yeah, is so many things you need to prove here. Yeah. So it's uh, you know it's important you know if you're perfectly healthy, you have you know you have a good paying job, you know they might say okay um, she could you know she or he could live without him for five years, you know they they need to wait outside the country. Oh, they might say that too. I didn't know that, really. I've yeah, they, never heard anything like that. Well, yeah. there were not so many Georgians who were, um, I, I, I don't want to say illegal. It sounds something like, so well, it illegal. sounds not right, like illegal immigrants or people illegal. Like, but let's say people who don't have. Entered illegally. Oh yeah, entered illegally. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah because to... because undocumented is not correct too, because they do have documents. Yeah, it's it's all you know, and I'm you know, we know each other, neither of us are politically correct, but we do want to get it right. 
So exactly. Then, so I, yeah. I don't want to insult anyone or say something yeah. that would upset someone. But if you uh, enter the country illegally, you're breaking the law. Like that's where it comes from. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, but you're still not illegal generally. So, well, yeah, you're not just a, yeah, <laughs> by definition, you know, you're not just, yeah. So, okay, uh, do you see any, any like tendency or how, how hard uh, it, it is to prove the case? Let's say of Georgian. Georgian applicants. Are there any any differences? Uh, is there any anything specific which you um which you see in a court, or is like one one standard and everyone uh must must like prove the same, or uh, is there anything That's different the uh, what, what, well, in in the court in the court? So we're supposed to have the same standards across the country. It's the same federal law. Um, with Georgian clients, I think that the difficulty, and I really, I don't, you know, mean to be offensive because Georgia has a rich cultural history. Um, you know, it's you know, old, right? old, you know, it's one of the, you know, oldest civilizations. Um, but it's a very small country, and people don't know, you know, uh, its history and its in the political issues. So I think with Georgian clients, it's especially important to educate the court about kind of the history of Georgia, you know. Like historical like, context? Yes. The political it's, context, which is like not comprehensible for, because for some the, of them? For example, if you, you know, have a client from Venezuela, everybody knows what's going on in Venezuela. From Hugo Chavez, now it's Maduro. Everybody knows about the election fraud, um, you know, this illegitimate um, president, Maduro, you know, most most uh, immigration judges will know what's going on in Venezuela. Most immigration judges will not know what's going on in Georgia. You know, they don't know the Georgian dream, the UNN, Gerci. They don't know, you know, about the LGBTQ law that was passed recently, the foreign agent law that, you know, from months back. They won't know that. So, um, as you've noticed, in you know, in court, what I try and do is ask the, the you know the immigrant, the applicant, questions. Well, when did this happen? Um, what happened after the USSR was dissolved? What was the party in power then? How did they lose power? And then, kind of following, you know, up to the war, and then you know, going forward. Um, so country country expertise is yes. country condition expertise is very important in that, yes like, in that like case. for example like the south Ossetia, that's a n whole nother uh you know issue that you really have to explain in the court um so it's it's good for you know and most most of you know my georgian clients because it's you know it's political they know the history very well and can easily explain it um you know because of what's happened to them but that is kind of an added, you know, because. But you can't court. assume that court will understand. No. no. Yeah, I mean, and and the and the, the role of the church, for example, or that's, what what does it mean, and why yeah. why uh, minorities are oppressed or like uh, persecuted there. Yes. Yeah. Even even if we were always proud of our multicultural uh, society and tolerance. That, that shifted really in a in a bad direction and bad bad way. So um, it's last past ten years, I would say, no more than ten years, like 10, 15, maybe maybe twenty. So um, one more important question for Georgians, um, uh, as I told you yesterday, and I've made a video about it, but uh, it's still. Um, there's still difference when you say it, and um, um, let's talk about the rumor JD, like a Georgian Dream Party, like ruling party, is spreading um, in the United States and um, within the immigration, like Georgian community, the new immigrants. Uh, what they say basically is that you are gonna, you you're never gonna get the status if you. If if the regime is changed in uh, Georgia and if Georgian Dream loses 
first thing, and I'll explain the context uh, better. And the second thing is that if Georgian pers- uh, citizen of Georgia who has applied for the political asylum goes to the ballot and votes uh, in Georgian elections, they're going to get in trouble and they they will not be able to prove in a court that they're persecuted in Georgia. So that's this insane uh, rumor is uh, has spread it like just recently. And every client, you know, and I have with, with you, with Raisa, with, with anyone, anyone who knows that I'm connected somehow with immigration is calling me and asking me, Am I getting in trouble if I go to the election? Uh, like, is it going to be like bad for my case? And am I going to be deported? And like insane uh, uh, idea and rumor generally. Please explain. And first question. Now, I have to be like more specific. Uh, what was it like if you... Uh, the regime changes. Yeah, yeah. If the regime changes. Like, uh, so... How important is past persecution, and what what needs to be like said? Let's say by the U.S. Department of State or Europe or like the, our partners in the West, how Georgia must be uh, present itself in the world uh, to uh, for that to happen, like to. Uh, to become impossible to get uh, asylum if you're applying from from Georgia. Okay, yeah, so yeah, let, let me let me break it down. So yeah, the the, the first and because there's two very different answers to both of those issues. Sure. Um, the the first one, whether you can, if you vote for your own, in your own country's election, um, please let me do the disclaimer again. Mm-hmm. Okay, please consult an attorney. Every situation is different. This is not meant to be legal advice. You can't really give blanket legal advice on a lot of these immigration issues. On a show, yeah. Yes. Or on YouTube. On YouTube. You can you you can ask Nanuka for my contact information and give me a call. I'll be happy to speak to you. Um, but okay, so if you you know when you go to an immigration trial, you know for asylum, I-589 application, um, you frequently you'll be asked about your activities in the United States, whether you, st- mm-hmm. especially if it's political, do you still support? When, when you claim that you're a political activist and that's yeah. why you were beaten up and almost yeah. killed and you, if you go back to your country, you're going to be yeah. killed or put in prison or so, whatever. You know, I would, ge- you know, while I'm not, so I would generally say that you're by voting in your country's election, even if you're not in that country, would suggest that you're still part of that political party or have that political ideology that is an, an immutable characteristic. And it might strengthen your case. And um, you might you might sorry to interrupt you, you can actually take a photo while you're voting and prove actually that you, you voted for, for the opposition or the, for the well, party. You're, you're, the well, States, we have a secret ballot. Well, we, it's in, in Georgia, you can do that. Okay. It's like a, no one can look into your ballot, but you can do it by your, uh, like if you, if you wish, like it's a free will. Yeah. I, I mean, it doesn't, you know, if I were to go to court and show the judge here, I voted for this, I mean, it would be kind of hollow. You know, anybody could do that. You know, or like, or, so or, you, could, or you could, like, show your voter registration. Yes. You know, that I you know, I'm mm-hmm. still active. You know, if, you know, and, and I really want to be clear. I'm not encouraging anybody to change their behavior or, um, you know, their general, you know. Or life. to vote for someone. You're not yeah, advocating any, party. any political party or mm-hmm. uh, force in, in yeah. Georgia, of course. You know, if if you, you have your your case and you don't need, you know, you don't need to mess around with it. It's your case. You tell the truth and you present your evidence. You don't need to, to you know, change anything or behave differently once you have your case. Right. But I, I don't. But anyway, back to the, the main question is I don't see that it would be 
uh, an issue in court if you did continue to, to support uh, the political party that you previously did. You could, now I don't know how the voting is done. If you have to go to the embassy and- Well, in, in Washington, you uh, you have to go to the embassy. Well, that's yeah. the base of this uh, rumor. And in, in New York, you have to go to the uh, general uh, consulate of okay. uh, Georgia, but- they, they don't do mail-in ballots in Georgia? What? They don't do mail-in ballots? Uh, no, no. So why not? I don't know. You have to show ID. Never, 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 yes, you have to show your ID. You have to sign. Ballot. You were there, but what country for is that, it? <laughs> for the, yeah, the people don't understand what you're saying. Right oh, now, okay. if they if they don't know the context. <laughs> so, oh, sorry, sorry. So, okay. No, it's okay. So, oh. well, some do. No. Uh, so, if you go, uh, even if it's placed uh, like at the station, the ballots. Are in in a, a station in a, in a consulate or embassy. There's no police or there's no uh, like army or anything that could really uh, even hypothetically yeah, or you and take you back to Georgia. Yeah. No, there's no way to do that. Okay. So you just go. It's just a building. I I think they're uh, saving money and not opening up the ballots elsewhere. They could. But they're not doing that. So because they've already rented the, the venue for, for the consulate or for the embassy, okay. it's only in Washington and in, in New York. There's another uh, a venue in, in San Francisco. So okay. what about that? So it's uh, no consulate. There. Oh, oh, or it's the consulate too. I, I don't know. So it, it is formally, it is uh, in the territory of Georgia. Yeah. But so, not, not practically. Yeah. So, you know, I, I I haven't had anybody or heard any that anyone's been denied an application because they because they've know, moved it. Yeah, I, I haven't. You know, hypothetically, they can make the argument that you are felt safe enough to go to their government and vote. Um, but you know, I would argue back. Well, that's the government. It's not the political party that was persecuting them. Um, uh, okay, and that's not technically. How can they detain someone in the, in the council yeah, in no, in the line of no threat? You know, it's in a voters' it's line. United. So imagine yeah. the Georgian yeah, police yeah, flying in to the United yeah, exactly. States. We got, we got an exit. You know, like it's you know North Korea. Um, you know, so I I would you know generally. Generally speaking, live your life, um, you know, support your, who you want to support. Um, you shouldn't have to change your behavior. Um, and especially it's more, you know, credibility and honesty are the most important things in immigration court. If the judge thinks you're up to no good or you're not being completely honest, they're not going to grant your claim. So I don't embellish, don't. You know, you you know, you don't have to make things up. You know, you you don't have to exaggerate. Just tell tell your story how it is. Um, and if that included voting, you know, I, I think that would demonstrate that you you can continue support. For example, if you're you know uh, you know the LGBTQ um, rights, you don't change your sexuality the moment you come to the United States. No, it's not no. like you're. You were gay there and because yeah. so if you're here. you know a supporter of you know name your you know should I say the part UNM um in Georgia and you come to the United States, you know, you you're still supporting them. You know, I don't I don't see that is, as an issue. Um so the, well quite the opposite. Yeah, quite yeah. the opposite in this yeah. case, especially in this case. Yeah. When yeah. Georgia is so uh like actual right now, they and, and they it's like Every other week, State Department issues a statement about Georgian Georgian um, officials being uh, sanctioned or like Georgian government affecting yeah. the democracy yeah. in Georgia and acting against um, Georgian people's um, interests and will, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, I don't think 
that is a uh, uh, strong uh, argument for for the JD and for rumor spreading yeah, yeah. <laughs> activists. So, uh, what about the country conditions? So, if the opposition wins, yes, so is it uh, is it changing like right away, like tomorrow? Let's say opposition has won on October twenty sixth. Yes. So the, and, the, and the judge is gonna say, "Oh, everything's fine now, and there's uh, no one who could yeah, who could." It, it, it happens. So, um, if you know, like I've had several cases where the government, you know, if you say you are like, we'll use Venezuela again. Mm -hmm. If Maduro, if you say I can't go back to, to Venezuela because Maduro is going, you know, in his government. They're corrupt and they're going to kill me. If Maduro and his whole political party disappear. Okay, one day. You, you know, and you go to court, you're, um, you know, the judge is going to say, well, your whole reasoning was based on this political party, this government. They're no longer there. So why are you, you know, why can't you return now? So it, it, it is a problem. Um, and it's happened you know, many, you know, I could bring up um, a less, like more of a morbid topic. For example, you know, there is cases involving with female genital mutilation. Mm. If you get it, you know. But it depends on context and it yeah, depends you, on the yeah. country and what yeah. you claim is so, based on. Yes. So you could, so you could say, you know, a, a really cold blooded judge could say, well, it already happened to you. It can't happen again. It's safe to go back. Let's say, let's say. Um, but there's, there's more to the story, though. Yeah, so go so, ahead. So, yeah. But generally speaking, you can make, you make an argument saying that your the case law is what matter of Chen. If if you've had severe persecution in the back in the past, there's a pr presumption that it will happen to you again in the future. And the court, even if the government's changed, the court can discretionarily grant your application. But even if, if the government has changed, but, but if, the, if, if the justice system is still corrupt, if the police officers are still there yeah. and uh, no one had arrested them or nothing has changed in the police if the general let's say another statement of uh u.s uh, uh department of state doesn't say that georgia is completely safe now and democratic uh, and everything has improved you can still prove your your uh case right because let's say someone's um someone was uh harmed beaten up by the police officer. And this person could be a witness for the trial. And the police officer got arrested or or is under prosecution right now. Let's so, say it's December 2024 and they've arrested someone. And the person could be a witness. Isn't his uh, life in, in danger still? Yes, but that would be for a different reason. You, you know, if you originally said, if you originally said, well, the political party is after me, and then you mm -hmm. change your story to no, this specific police officer. No, no, no. I what I mean is that if if the SUSI, for example, state security uh, mm -hmm. services were after you, how oh, can you? Still how... Around? Yeah, I mean, you would say they're still around. Um, they haven't changed. Um, but, you know, and I really want to be careful here because I don't want to give blanket advice on this issue. Um, it's it's well, very... That's, I, I understand that too. Yeah. Well, if Georgia becomes uh, part of the European Union, there must be... Uh, yeah, that, that would... Changes that would, already would, have. <laughs> well, the issue with that too is that if you're in the European Union, you're, you're granted free travel to the rest of Europe. So you have to prove nowhere in Europe is safe for you which is very difficult exactly uh, exactly right? so that's what i mean for this elections you know, not to go and not to vote based on the fear that 
something could change in a good way in your country like it's it's like unforgivable was, if you ask me <laughs> I, I, I would hope that nobody would be making decisions based upon you know these these consequences you know you, you don't want to not vote in your political party because you're scared that you know that that's what they advise people mm -hmm. to do so that's that's my concern and that's why i'm i'm uh, asking you what how it's going to look in the court and for well, the judge and for would, the prosecutor yeah so i i have like personal you know i had a case once when i first started where um it, it was in india and the political party this guy said they're the ones after me it's nobody else they're the ones after me they lost the election and disbanded the day before the trial <laughs> poor guy i see it and the prosecutor just pulls out this uh you know impe you know edit you know a couple articles saying these people aren't around anymore what's what you know what's going on here um and you know we, we postponed the trial i had to talk to my client you know it was you know it was a big deal but you know that judge would have been unlikely to grant the application he said well you, you said these people were after you now they're not there anymore um you know you safe for you to go back these people that you know you were at, that were after you are you are gone now um in Bombay, but listen yeah. if, if you're if you're um if you left your country because of the political persecution yeah. and if it's not there anymore so then you're safe to go back. then then you safe to go back so i would go back yeah. easily mm -hmm. if if the jd would uh, be defeated and my life life wouldn't be in danger anymore or my my freedom or yeah. my family's yeah, I mean, that's, yeah that, i mean that's you, you know yeah i mean um and it, it happens frequently like a, in bangladesh their government their they had a their government for the past they were like a marxist kind of corrupt government um the awami league uh, just got kicked out of office like a couple months ago, the leader is in exile. Um, people who, you know, were threatened by them are going to have, you know, you know, their cases will definitely be affected. Yeah, I understand, but but I still think that for Georgians, uh, first of all, I don't see the chances that the Georgian dream will be eliminated within uh, a day or something, and that they won't have any. Uh, influence uh, in some of these uh, institutions we're talking about. And, and First thing is like, that. Like Second thing, what I think is that the West must uh, say at some point that it has improved, that police is not acting like like animals anymore, and that <coughs> no no political opponents are persecuted um based on uh their political opinion or activities that minorities rights are are um well yeah that's another are defended are are, are like my, minorities yeah. rights are not uh, violated anymore right yeah. yes so that's a I, I don't think the society will change uh its behavior like of but, but radical yeah. aggressive yeah. groups but that is a different claim so if you're if it's a minority right well it's it's all under under the 589 and we we've, yeah. we've had all of it right yeah but if we, you have a strictly political claim based on you know a specific leader or party you know and they're no longer around you know then, then that's different than if they're no longer around but if they're yeah. in parliament of georgia for uh, with with 30 percent let's say they have 30 percent they can't uh create the government anymore but they're still around they they're still in power they still have uh, uh immunity like a, a member of parliament's immunity I, I honestly i i would think this would be more of like a case-by-case -case basis i would have to look at it i really can't predict how that would um you know would turn out it really would depend on the circumstances and, uh, each well, if someone someone says that, like, if JD 
was in in a power with like fifty five percent of voters. Yeah, I mean, if they're still then, up, to, if they're still up to, you know, if, if it depends how you build your game, case. Yeah, yeah, you know, then then that's the same. You know, if they disappear, that's a totally different you know, story. Well, unfortunately, they they're not. It, the, that's not not going to be the case. No, uh, they're not going to disappear. There are people who voting for them who still vote for them. Like there, are, there's uh well according to last polls. There's a 32% of Georgians who wants the uh, JD to stay in power. So, considering that, and and the the, the um, tools they have to rig the election and to falsify the results, they're gonna, they're gonna come win. close, like to for I would say 40%. In a good case, wow. so if if they if well yeah, that was the case in twenty twelve, so the ruling party had forty five percent, and uh, the no not forty five, for forty two I think, and forty eight was Georgian Dream. Wow. And uh, well. Um, yeah, and it's, yeah, there's election tampering. Yeah, uh, but you need you need the majority to um, create the government and to oh. complete the government. So you need the majority, and in some cases you need the constitutional majority, which is like uh, ninety um, votes out of uh, one hundred and fifty. Okay. So and and that leaves them still. Uh, in, not in power, but uh, within this area of the influence. So, so, um, what would you say to Georgians to go and vote or to <laughs> to stay <laughs> home? <laughs> so generally, I would say okay. So my, you know, we're, America, we're all immigrants. Okay, so when my, you know, grandparents, you know, had the right to vote, it was a tremendous. Um, you know, opportunity, and they felt it was a privilege. And I grew up with, you know, the feeling that you have to vote, everybody has to vote, your vote matters, and it counts. Uh, you know, personally, I'm a little bit, uh, you know, there's a little bit of disillusion with the, uh, you know, our system. But, you know, go out and vote if you believe in democracy, if you, uh, you know, believe, you know, we can, you know, live better, you should, you, should, you know, and you like your candidate, please vote. Oh, so you 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 you're saying you're not going uh, to vote I, in I this election? <laughs> I don't believe it. Oh, uh, I can't say it's a secret ballot. Though, and, and it's a secret ballot. We can't say. Yeah, yeah. but people, you know, yesterday I've had um, I've met someone who told me that uh, it doesn't change anything, and one vote doesn't change anything, and my vote doesn't do anything, and that's not right. You, exactly your yeah, vote could be could be the one that yeah, makes a difference yes your yeah. vote your vote can make a difference so yeah. i think we all must go and vote and um, if we want to stay in the united states then we need to prove past persecution yeah. Past, past so persecution, like, well, well based past persecution is yeah, so, yesterday. Yeah, yeah, going back, if the judge can grant your application based on past persecution alone, if you know if it's significant, um, that you know even if country conditions have changed, it can happen. It's not you know, and I don't. Some judges, will, you know, well, um, you, know. you can you can prove everything, and judge might say as i've seen in georgia a uh, judge has seen the videotape where the person was beaten up by the police oh, and judge's it. reaction was i don't believe georgian police could do that i don't believe georgian police mm -hmm. would behave like that he was he was looking mm -hmm. at the videotape and he said i don't know what this is, uh, what this is so I've yeah. had this kind of cases too. So anything could happen, but anything not happens. to go and not to vote and not to help your country in this situation where we actually have to choose to go back to USSR and uh, like in in deep Russian. I'm not gonna say the word a word. 
excrements, let's say, okay. and and to change and shift your life like completely and to go towards like uh, uh, Western uh, lifestyle and Western society. And it's I, I told you it's not not the same for Georgians when they when they choose Europe. It doesn't mean they're like for. Woke politics, or something. Yeah. Uh, or the Georgians aren't woke people. I don't, I don't think. No, they're pretty conservative and traditional. Well, some, most of them are. Yes. But but they all want uh, a good future for their children. They they want better health care. They want better life. They want to live like a normal life and not not to the think American about surviving. Thing. Uh, every day, so so they need to vote. They need to change something. So, so yeah. So I'm, yeah. I'm 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 like pushing you towards <laughs> saying that yeah. they have to vote. Yeah. Okay. okay so we we have uh, our 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 is up. This is legal, but generally just vote. Get out there and vote. Yeah. So thank you very much for um, being with us today. Um, I hope so. We have every. Mm, Every um, it was uh, initially we we're thinking to do like every last week of the month to have at least one lawyer and legal advisor uh, on air. So we might uh, see you again. Hopefully, yeah. You got a, you have a bunch of attorneys, Manuka. You know yeah, I do, I do. But uh, like, you, you, has conversation time. conversation with you was really interesting and really oh, uh, important for. So, mm, like I said, for I'm the immigrants, flattered to be here. Um, I love the you know um, my Georgian clients. Nanuka is brilliant. She's um, it's, you know explains. You know, see the other side of the story is her just teaching me history, politics, uh, <laughs> explaining I, I just, every yeah, context there is, right? everything. Um, uh, but yes, thank you. Um, thank okay, you thank thank you.